This machine is sitting on a private network. Normally to get to this machine you'd have to go through a bastion host or something else. We are going to create a VPN. We will connect to our VPN service. When it connects it will bring up our Google account organization. In this case I'm part of this Castle Rock organization. It will log me in. Once I'm logged in the authentication will go through. It will tell me that I am connected. Now that it's connected I'll be able to SSH to the machine directly even though it's on a private network. Before I show you how to do this, let's take a look at our trick of the day. Today's episode is sponsored by the heel flip. It's kind of like a kick flip, but you kick it in front of you instead. This was the first time I'd actually pulled it. First, let's set up the Google SAML application. So I've logged into my G Suite account and I have management permissions. So I'm going to go into the admin section and on this dashboard I see apps so I click on apps and here's SAML apps and I'm going to create a new SAML application and I'm going to give it the name Castle Rock AWS VPN application and now I need an ACS URL Now, the one difference here is that you notice that we're doing HTTPS right here, but Amazon actually says to do HTTP, but if we try to do HTTP, it's not going to work. So we'll leave that in there for now and come back to that. Now we're going to add some mapping for the different fields. Now here's the hack. The problem is, oh, and don't forget this one. You want to make sure that your people actually have access. Otherwise, if you don't do this, it's not going to work later on, right? So I might as well take care of this now. Okay, so now the issue is this needs to be HTTPS, right? And we actually need to change this. And we can't change it right here. Otherwise, it won't work. So what we do is we open up our screen here. And we're going to go to the network. We'll clear everything. Whoops, dollar it records. Stop recording. We'll clear. And I'm just going to see what happens if I change this to a one. And so I'll start recording and I'll update this. Okay, so that's what happens. It just goes through. And this is what it actually renders. And I'm going to do this copy as a CURL. Now what I'm going to do is open this up inside of this temp foo file and now I'm going to go through and actually change it. So where it says 127, I'm going to come in and move this to HTTP, change this back to a zero, and now I'm going to execute it. Boom, can just refresh the page. You'll see that it now says HTTP. So that solved that problem. So that's the hack that we needed to do. But at this point, our SAML application is set up. It has the parameters at AWS once. Next up, we need to download this metadata. So we're just going to do download metadata. So we'll just click download metadata. Now we're going to add an AWS SAML provider. Amazon tells us the easiest way to do this is to grab this repository. Now we'll upload these keys. There's the server key, server cert, and those are the three that we need. Okay, those three right there. There we go. We're going to have to create a VPC in order to test all of this out. We'll need to create subnets, some routers, NAT gateways, all that stuff. And then what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have a subnet that is a private subnet that has no access 
uh, from the outside world and then we're gonna put a server on it. We'll just load up some Amazon instance onto it so that we can test it out. Let's take a look and see what it actually created for us. We're gonna create a new instance and we're gonna give it in this app subnet one, might as well, right? So this is 059. We have our stuff completed. We have our new instance launched. Okay, the groundwork is now laid. We have our Google SAML application. We have our certificate created, and we now have our VPC created. It's time to create our VPN. So we're gonna go into our VPC management, and down here, you'll see endpoint security VPN, and we're going to client VPN. And we're gonna create a new one. Castle Rock. And we just need to give it an IP address that's not inside of what we have right now. And it's important too that the largest it be is a slash 22. So we can find the one that we created here, which is this one. We're gonna use user based. And since we're using our SAML, we'll just use our Castle Rock SAML that we created already. We don't have this one created, so we won't log the client just to keep it simple. We won't have anything in here. We'll just keep it all simple as defaults. Um, we can enable the self-service portal. And then we'll say create client VPN endpoint. This one thing I forgot is I forgot to make it split tunnel. Make sure that's there. It's nice that you can actually, one of the few things you can change after you're done. So now we need to go through our association and associate this with a uh, VPC. So we're going to associate it with the only VPC that we have. And then I want to associate it with the VPC that the instance that I created in it. So this is the one. B. So we're going to associate with this subnet. You can associate it with more than just that one. It doesn't have to be other ones. And of course we want to give it um, some authorization. So we're just going to leave the default stuff in there. And the route table should be created automatically with our connections here. This is what we'll show soon. We need to authorize the ingress. So 10.21.0.0 slash 16. That way everybody can get into this particular network where all my endpoints are being created. And then we'll just wait for this to be associated. Okay, so now that that's ready, we need to download the client configuration. And you will probably need a VPN client. If you don't have one, you can download it from Amazon site. When we first open it up, we'll need to manage the profiles. So we will add a profile. We will call this one Castle Rock. Select the profile that we want. And we are now ready to connect. So as I connect, it pulls it up. I select the one I actually want to sign into. If I'm already signed into another one, it will not work. And I connect again. And you'll receive this authentication details, receive processing details. You may close this window at any time. So now it's connected in, which is great. Going back to our EC2 instance that we have, you can see its IP address is 10.21.101.6. So we can log into this. And we are able to log in. 